welcome listeners to this episode of Listen, Christy, which uh, for me, I feel like is a little bit more welcome to the family sort of episode where you're going to have an up close and personal viewpoint and vantage point from one of Christy's longtime nearest and dearest. Uh, I think this is what you officially call like a ride or die. It doesn't yeah. get any better than no. this. It's official um, ride or die. If you don't have a best friend like this in life, you're missing out. You're missing the boat. And I'm sorry for you because they're rare and very hard to come by. So we have Shanna Brown with us, who is not only all the things I just mentioned, but also the ranch manager Mm -hmm. for what has been the captain of the chaotic craziness. (laughs) The chief eye roller. Cost of chaos. Isn't that what you used to call it? Yeah, absolutely. So. I said, you know, we need to have Shanna on. She knows where all the bodies are buried. We've been best friends since we were nine years old. We talked this morning about how, you know, everything that we've had so far as far as guests go have been a little bit on the serious or educational subject. But, you know, people are starting to send questions and feedback and want to get to know a little bit more personal details. And who better to do it than Shanna? I have all the good stories. (laughs) Yeah. So we have a baby goat right now in the bathtub. As, uh, you know, extensive as sometimes it can be getting ready and preparing for podcasts and for filming. This morning, we... Life happens. Got a call from Shanna as her life seems to have happened a lot on the ranch that you had a baby goat that needed... It was just born. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Like I say, I come with baggage and you just never know. I may show up with three horses and two minis and baby goats and... But that's... You know, it's just your everyday life. That's your deal. Animals have always kind of been your oh yeah, your safe oh, yeah. place. My safe place. You're exactly right. So take us back to maybe when you and Christy first met. Do you remember like the first time you saw her or the first time you became friends or she mouthed off to you? So oh, never. So my dad was a local horseshoer in our area. And he comes home one day with this little sassy blonde and says, this is going to be your new best friend. And you have to know my dad. He could talk to a tree. I mean, just... And you remember this, Christy? Oh, yeah. Just, so <laughs> apparently he had been at her barn, she and her horse, and somehow she ended up back at our house. And I'm not sure she didn't take up residency there I for did. quite a while. Uh, she spent every summer there, and we became best friends. Because y'all were not in the same school. Or in the yeah, same grade. we overlap from time to time. <laughs> this one here changed schools often. And so, five different high schools. Yes, it was an SOS to find out what high school or what school <laughs> she was at next. But uh, yeah, you know, I can even, I can give the Disney version or the Jerry Springer version. Oh, I think you we know, want a little of both. The, of the Christy Schuller stories. Yeah. So my dad brought her home and said, you're going to love, she has horses, you two are going to get along great. And I'm like, hmm. Because Shannon was shy. Shannon is still shy. Yeah. So when they say opposites attract, you couldn't be more right. Like there's, do we have any similarities besides our (laughs) two great daughters? Two great daughters. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I love uh, beautiful things. She's the outspoken one. I'm the quiet, shy one. I I say I do all the talking and she then implements it to make it happen. But the problem is sometimes my talking can get us in trouble. A lot of times. Yes. So anyway, he, she brings, uh, my dad brings Christy home and we spend our summers rodeoing. I think she was more my cheerleader. Um, if you know anything about her manual labor is not in her vocabulary. (laughs) So, um, her, her, her favorite phrase is, oh, we should do. There's no, if you know, (laughs) there is no we, there's no we. That's an automatic assignment. Yes. So my dad was a stickler. So back in our day, I'm not going to date us. But on Saturday nights, it was a big deal just to go to town and ride up and down the like main street, cruise? just yeah. cruise up and down and just hope someone would see you on your horse. No, 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 no. no. Oh. in a car. I'm, in sorry. A car. <laughs> I'm sorry. Drive. I should have said drive. We have every excuse to go to town. You know, we got to get something to eat or we have to wash the car. Anything. We, anything. Get gas. So literally people would just kind of park and you would just drive up and down Main Street hoping somebody would see you. It's one stoplight to in the town. say hi. So in order for us to do that. How old were y'all? Well, as soon as we got our driver's license, so I was thirteen when I got mine. Driving them, like a forklift to Houston yeah. at eleven or something. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, back then we could get our hardship like at fourteen. So I mean, the right. the rules were so different. 
Um, but my dad was a stickler for if he worked us all day Saturday. Hard. There has to be. I didn't hear about child labor laws until I was an adult. <laughs> and I was like, Howard, how do I get compensation? <laughs> yes. Back pay. Our compensation was that we would get to go out. Yeah. But he was hoping we'd be so tired that we wouldn't You'd want get to, to go out to go drive out. the street? To yeah. drive the street. That, <laughs> that was a was big good. deal. But wait, we... I only did one or two, and then I said, I think I'm allergic. They don't even make it. I said, when 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 Shanna, 15 years ago, came to run the ranch, I said, I know what I want. I want creosote fences. And she looked at me and started smiling. And I said, yeah, I, I want it. I want creosote fences, just like we used to have to paint when we were little. And it was, creosote is just this horrible sticky like a tar that mm -hmm. and she goes they don't make it anymore because it causes cancer and like, <laughs> really there's a reason <laughs> there's a reason yeah but if you got that on you it just burns and it's not like we have soft summers in south texas right so, so my dad yeah. anyway he would make us do lots of chores and this one here would disappear and mm. i'm like where is she? And I mean, we had a list. We're talking build fences, mow, clean the dog kennel, clean the stalls. And she learned that she could like slip off into the hayloft and like take a little nap and kind of disappear. Well, I learned from an early age that, you know, we wanted to go out, right? Right. So someone had to do the work. Right. And so... That's what we learned. Or he would stop <laughs> us coming out the gate and make us change our tire randomly he's like okay girls if you're going somewhere or you're pulling a horse trader here's the jack show me you can change that tire or back that 45 foot rig up a half a mile before you can go out in reverse yes what yes yes it was yeah and the truck was a standard wow i mean props to him for actually teaching you probably what became very valuable Teaching you very valuable, me very valuable yes. life, you know, essential, get along and, you know, sometimes save somebody else's. But ass. I always had a cheerleader. Right. So, I mean, well, how I can remember, though, you know, he would when you're you needed somebody in the in the bed of the truck, you know, you're trying to back up to hook the gooseneck up, you know, to the ball in the middle of the, the bed of the truck. Well, of course, I guess I'm about 14 and I am taking my horses to the vet. I can't remember where I'm going, but I got two horses in a two horse, but it's a ball hitched to the bumper. Well, I got to town and slowed down, went over the railroad tracks. So you're maybe going 15 miles an hour. And all of a sudden it passes me with the horses in it. And I'm thinking, Howard's going to kill me. But I realized everything we learned was on the the gooseneck uh -huh. and it I had the wrong size ball and it just came off and <gasps> it went through the front of a beauty shop oh my god and there there was like three or four shampoo bays and two ladies had just got up it was a Saturday morning to get their hair done <sighs> and they had just gotten stepped up out of the bay to sit in their chairs were you with her no it was not but the same thing happened to me about six years later the same railroad tracks pulling a two horse bumper pull and a friend of mine had hooked it up. My dad had always taught us, you hook it up. You don't rely on someone else. And he got a call about 11 o'clock at night. So now the, the beauty salon that hers went through is now a bar six years later. <laughs> and so my horse trailer went over the same railroad tracks, comes loose. Cause it kind of gets gains it, traction going down. Thank God I didn't have any horses in mind, but ends up inside the bar. So, yes. Yeah, so he gets the same call six years later. People don't stop drinking. He's like, just girls, like, girls, girls, really. We'll have to girls. watch y'all better. And you know what's crazy about you two is like, even if it was just that one crazy story that brought you so many, there's hundreds, literally hundreds. Like, I think I hear a new story every week about some shenanigans y'all got into. Yeah, we were, I was just getting out of the hot water, maybe within three or four months about the the bumper pool coming undone and her dad had just got this beautiful new Ford Dooley, uh, the, you know, the fancy, I don't guess they made King Ranch, whatever the premium was with the V8 
fancy paint job and it was black and silver and it had this beautiful red pinstripe down the side. And we had gone out to the beach and we were actually on the, on the bay side. And so the lots are that the houses that are on them are on stilts and they're very long and narrow lots. Well, every, all of our friends are down by this dock and I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to back the truck up. Shanna's going to be so impressed and pick her up. And it was pitch dark. And we were, this, this house was kind of to the side. I thought it was far enough away that it wasn't an issue. I put it in reverse and I start going back and I said, huh, I better look where I'm going. And I opened up the door. Well, the suspension, um, uh, poles that hold the it looks like a beach house right that hold it up caught that door and of course you because you were still driving backwards when you opened the door yes <gasps> to see, and, look out just to, to look see out. where she was going because the windows are tinted and so i really couldn't see so i open it up and right at that time it hits the two <gasps> poles and the door completely goes backwards on this in, brand new truck. It still got the tags on it. Oh my God. Into the front quarter panel. It is just flipped back and it is embedded. Like you can't even pull it out. It is now one with the front. So it looks like one of those Jeeps without doors on the right <laughs> side. And I'm like, oh. and now the house, is, <gasps> that's what's holding up. And the gentleman sleeping in his house, you know, was probably fussing like, oh, these kids are making so much noise. And, and you tore his house down. Yeah. We were and you able, were with her? Oh, yes. Yeah. We were sure. able to get the door Wire it. wired it shut. And what was so bad is we had a rodeo the next day. I think it was like in Port Lavaca, a couple hours away. Well, that was our only vehicle back back then to drive, you know, and pull the trailer. So we had to use that truck. Did your daddy know what you'd all done? Oh yeah, they were. They went to the rodeos with us. I uh, know. We 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 got a. What a kind good... of trouble did y'all get into? Like like say you got in trouble. What was your punishment? Um, I can't. A lecture, a probably. Lecture, yeah. Which an ass chewing is just especially you just never wanted to disappoint her dad. Yeah, he was just the kindest, fairest. He just was wonderful and. So when we brought it back to my house, we parked it. So when you pulled up, you couldn't see that. The we door. don't know if it magically thought it was going to yeah. be like a crab leg and grow back. I mean, we're like, we'll deal with it in the morning. <laughs> well, we have an issue the next morning, eight o'clock. <gasps> Look what happened. So, Look. but wait, does like when you knock the house down, do emergency services come? Does oh, no. no. Or you just no. nobody Bolted. calls any back then nobody there calls no anybody. One. No, oh, just like whoopsie. We knew you know, we knew the people that the guy that owned the house, but okay. I mean, he was upset, but and I'm sure we were somewhere we were probably not supposed to be. Right. And you know. word got around that that's who knocked Mr. So and so's house down. Well, yeah, he probably <laughs> had it coming. I don't he know. probably did. So I have to tell you one of my favorite stories is the one that you tell about Shannon when she was wearing that ring in the car. Oh, yeah. Well, again, my mouth can sometime overload. <laughs> now, in my defense, I really didn't remember this girl or why for some reason she was so mad. But after school... We would go to this, um, like a knockoff Dairy Queen called Dino's called Dino's and, um, it, the best hamburgers. And they had like 25 different kinds of shakes, you know, way back before it was a thing. And so we would go there after school and get a hamburger and a shake. And when our, our metabolism was much better. Mm -hmm. Well, Everybody kind of did this because it was only you, you know, cruise or, sh or yeah. we yeah, were cruising. Yeah, <laughs> but only a handful. But now we're like third in line and there's three cars behind us. So there's no place to really go. So as we're sitting there, I look over in the Ruby mirror and I see this girl. She looks very mad and she's she's tall. She's every bit as tall as Shanna, but very stout. She was like the first female that I ever knew that said that they were a weightlifter. I mean, she just, just was strong. 
she was quite a bit older than me, you know, probably like four years older or something. And she comes up to the side and Shanna's like, what'd you do? To your window? To, to yes, but to Shanna's side. Okay. To my side, of course. <laughs> and I said, I don't know what I did. I mean, like. I As don't... she's dragging me out of the truck by my this hair, morning. I'm hollering at her. What did you do? Mm -hmm. What did you say? Who is this person? Right. So she tells her, you know, she rolls down the window first and says, um, you know, I don't understand. She's trying to talk to her. Like, what's right. your so mad? And this girl's, I still don't know what the argument was about. And uh, I think she maybe had a sister that didn't like me. I I'm not sure. I, I you know. didn't even know this girl's name. Uh, it was Lisa. Yeah. God bless her soul. And then she passed on. Didn't she pass Did you kill away? Her? <laughs> not that day wasn't me well <laughs> i'm just looking in this you know it's she's got kind of short sleeve shirt and she just had the girl had a rocking body like she muscles i was, mean she was strong you gotta realize every bit of six feet tall and so we still don't know what you've done to piss her off i'm not sure if you realize so i'm i'm in high school i am six foot tall uh -huh. i weigh 120 pounds I am a just olive oil, little bitty scrawny thing, right? Mm -hmm. And thank God I had an older sister who used to beat the living crap out of me growing <laughs> up. And so I knew how to defend myself because of that. And so, yeah, so this girl pulls me out of the truck and literally is fixing to pummel me to the ground. Like, there's no explanations. There's no talking my way out of and it. Basically, it was the girl's attitude was, you're going to take up for her. You're going to get it, too. Your ass is So she was going to whoop up on you next? I guess. That was Once the plan. Once she got done with me, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Shanna had, and I'm going to date myself, but, you know, when we were in high school, if people remember, they were called tulip rings. Mm -hmm. And they kind of stood up like ring. a tulip, and the prongs held like a little... You would stack them, mm -hmm. and they held like a little ruby, a, a sapphire, and a whatever. So you'd have three of them, and they'd kind of float around, but they just look like little tulips. And I remember her dad saying one time, if you'll ever get in any kind of situation, you have to defend yourself. Don't tell anybody what you're going to do. Just, you know, if they're talking trash or whatever, and it ever has to come to that, you just do it. Because I would have really liked that, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't get, you know, don't tell somebody what you're going to do to them. Mm -hmm. Lock them off guard and just beat them to the punch. Well, thank God she never got the first swing in. She had me by the hair. And so in my defense, because growing up with an older sister who, I mean, she had shot me with a BB gun. <laughs> she had beat me with, you know, we'd go to the barn in the mornings and she'd make me do all the chores or I would get, you know, whooped on and... We were tomboys. I mean, we were like having two boys in the family. And I took one swing to defend myself, not to hit her. Because she's got you by the hair. She's got me right. by the hair. She's so dragged me out of the truck. Shanna's body is between, mm -hmm. you know, I can't really see. I mean, I can see her head's down. and and uh, But I, I can just, Shanna rear back and... <sighs> She lets her have it. Well, I don't see when it makes contact because there's hair and everything in between. All I see is it looked out of a movie, a gush of blood start just the, the prong from the ring caught her here and slid it her face wide open. I'm like, oh, there's blood involved. We're so in trouble. All I was wanting was a dipped cone. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> So thank God I had the tulip ring on that day yes. because she was fixing to pummel me and I was literally she just defending myself. Again. So you have to realize this was a town, a neighboring town that we didn't go to school in. So we were the outside okay. girls oh, yeah, I know that all dated that. those guys that lived in that town. So we were already disliked. I had already put in for a transfer to that girl's school a week before. And I didn't know this girl. So now not only has this happened, now next week I've got to go to school with the same stitches. school as this girl that this has just happened with. 
So she starts screaming bloody murder. Murder. You hit me. There's you hit me. I'm like everywhere. I did. Like I still don't even know I hit her. All I was doing was defending myself. You're picking her face out your brain. Exactly. And she had to go get stitches. But so how was it when you had to finally go back to school with so, her? So so no, I was starting a new school where she was going right. to school. And so I walk in with my little 120 pound little scrawny self. And everyone's just looking at me like, ooh, that's that girl. Ooh, don't <gasps> mess with her. And I'm like, what did I do? What did I do? And they're like, like, that's like, she's a cheerleader. She's popular. She's. We still don't know what we did wrong. We still don't know what we did wrong. And do you, she ducked and dived every time I saw her in school. She was never, scared of you? Never mm. had an issue with her. Never had an issue with anyone in that school after that. So Shanna set the tone. The good she Lord was looking tone. over me. Yeah. Well, we still uh, never found out what this one said, but. But I feel like through the course of your relationship, you've had so many stories. It's like you're always sort of saving each other from something. Right. Well, I think I'm the more the, I always say I'm kind of have the dustpan and kind of going behind and, and I'm always like, what did you do? How many times have I had to say that? What did you do? What did you or do? I have an idea. Or I just need you to do this thing for me. Just this one thing. Yeah. How many things could we represent right now? Like if you need some really fantastic mink lashes, these ladies have a lovely line called catwalk lashes. Exactly. Uh, well, who knew? Yeah. We, ranch, we ranch and we have lashes. We do. But when Shanna uh, started managing the ranch, oh gosh, over 15 years ago. And she moved there. I said, look, here's the deal. We, at first, we didn't have a ranch manager. We just bought it. And I was leaving one day. No, we were. Right. And we had, we were coming up for the weekends. I had another job. I was a court reporter for 15 years. So that kind of gave me that base of there's always two sides to the story. And then there's a third. So Mm -hmm. not to judge people on the first impression. So Christy and I were going up about every other weekend. Mm -hmm. She had one night um, called me and said, hey, uh, can you meet me there this weekend? I bought two ponies last night. I'm like, how'd you buy two ponies? Now, I'm not at the time very versed in the whole internet thing. Wait, wait, let me back up one second. So I convinced her to come be the ranch manager. And I said, you won't have to deal with people. It's secluded. It's a two mile long driveway. You'll, everything will be very peaceful. Just you and your little girl. Just, what was it? Sign for FedExes and just make sure that the place didn't burn down. Because people that, we, we had had a little incident with a busted pipe. And I thought if, if we weren't there to catch it, it would have been 10 more days before we came back. Everything would have been ruined. Right. And I said, look, just make sure that everything stays together and then enjoy yourself. It's going to be easy. I'll let her take it from there. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so I pack up spring break with my Hummer. My, what was Zoe? Probably eight years old. Uh, seven Full of everything, three cats, a chihuahua, kind of reminds me of you, a chihuahua, border collie, and we head to College Station. And um, at the time, the ranch was only one house and one cabin and 200 acres at the time. So it, it's pretty, pretty simple and pretty since, simple life. Since then, in those 15 years, just to give everybody a perspective, what does the ranch consist of now? So now Nine we... Homes? Now we have nine homes, two large equestrian barns. It's completely developed. 350 acres. 350 acres. At one time, I managed 23 employees. <laughs> and so, how many horses? So 123 uh, horses at one time. And a breeding program. Yes. So signing for FedExes and making sure the place doesn't burn down. Kind of grew. Kind of grew. Exactly. So she calls me one night when... Uh, before we've, I've moved up there and she said, okay, well, I need you to go up there. I'm have, I bought two ponies. I said, what do you mean you bought two ponies? She goes, well, might've been some wine involved, but I got on the internet, kind of like Amazon. Did you know that you can order buy, ponies, order horses, like kind of like Amazon? <laughs> well, this one figured that out pretty fast. So two ponies showed up. Okay. 
Well, then she's, here we go. You know, once she gets started on something, so then she's like, okay, I have a horse coming uh, for Sinclair. So here it comes. I'm like, where are you finding where these Where are we going to put this stuff? We don't even have a barn. We have a pasture. I don't yeah. even have a horse trailer. And so, yes. So about <laughs> five or six later, I said, you need to return half of these and this has to stop. It's kind of like how you return the Amazon packages. Yes. <sighs> so it's like return to sender. Thank this is God. not going to work. But the best one was I had bought. Thank God you got that ranch stuff out of your system. A little, um, I guess they call them like Morgan buildings that mm -hmm. you can buy them already. They look like, you know, little tool sheds or, but I was going to trick it out for our girls for a playhouse. So this, I wasn't there, but this man pulls up flatbed has the thing on the back and she calls me and she was like, okay, the guy's here. I go, she goes, he's making me a little nervous. I go, Why? She goes, I don't know. He just looks really weird. I go, well, I'm not asking to date him. I mean, just, so he's asking her all these questions. And she said, he's concerned that I'm running a ranch and I have flip-flops on. Yes, it was middle of July. And so I show up on the tractor and I wear like Bermuda shorts and I had on flip-flops because it was so hot. It was like 110 degrees. Right. And so she said, he's just is dressed strange and he's got a long sleeve shirt. He's asking me about what church I go to. And I was just trying to be friendly. She goes, he's got a wedding ring on. He doesn't need, and I said, well. He and he doesn't watch TV. They don't have TVs right. in their home. So that was the get send off. Him, she tells him, I really like um, Joel, Osteen. Joel Osteen. And he goes, I don't guess I know who that is. She said, how can you not know who Joel Osteen is? And he goes, well, we don't have TVs. And she said, he just really needs a haircut. And he's got this like weird hat. And I feel like he's trying to recruit me. He, yeah. He's really... And he's just dropping off a playhouse? Yeah, measure? yeah yes. just dropping off. Yeah, just a delivery guy. And so I said, wait a minute. Are they curls like mine, but they're like controlled? And she goes, you know him? I said, no. She goes, I'm telling you, he's a member of some cult. He keeps talking about meteorites and out of, out of space. And I go, no, he's a Mennonite. <laughs> She realize. goes, what the hell does that mean? And I go, he's, he's Amish. He built, that's where I bought it from, was the Amish. We're, we're from I a small know town. Gonna, I'm you sorry. Know, we didn't have Amish. I, I was obsessed with the she Amish. She was obsessed. I Because my parents that took out. me to see the Amish when I was in elementary school. And but I said no. He's and you thought he was trying to hit on you. She said, "Honey, well, he was." She goes, "Honey, he's trying to recruit I you." I said, for "Are a you wife. kidding? You're six one and can work a tractor and look like Cindy Crawford. He brings you in the fold, you know, as a single woman. You're like the Pamela Anderson of the Amish Amish world." Oh. <laughs> that was. She goes, just... "I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't like it." That was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. So this is my first week on the job. First week, okay. So I was supposed to just move there, find for FedEx packages, make sure nothing burns down, and I was still going to continue my career as a court reporter. Well, that kind of fell through. Second week on the job, she calls, I got an assignment for you. That's always scary when she says that. I said, what's the assignment today? <laughs> She said, okay, I need you to go to this town and take two dog kennels and you're going to pick up two swan, but you got to meet this guy at a truck stop on the side of, I remember interstate, was it 59 or something like that? I said, are you kidding me? She goes, here's his name. I said, look, he wanted to meet you at three in the morning. And I told him in Spanish, which may or not have been right, but I said, no, these swans were hot. <laughs> Absolutely, they come. They came off of somebody's hotel. Or, you can't get a pair of white. Did fully, you know that then? I didn't ask. You ask, questions. you own it. You ask, you own it. That so you just not, sent Shannon in blind. So I found a broker, and he <laughs> says, "Hey, I can hook you up with two swans." And I'm like, "Oh yeah." 
Well, I bought a petting zoo, which I left that part out. Actually, actually, it was the pets, same day. She didn't tell me. Pets until age out of petting zoos. Nobody wants to pet, you know, <laughs> a, the the sheep that's two hundred fifty pounds. They want to. So, they want so, the little lamb. So that came later. So <laughs> so she gives me the address. I meet the guy at a truck stop. Now I'm in my Hummer. I have. I decided to take the Chihuahua. <laughs> She's only two weeks in. I'm two weeks in. So much empathy. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> She's crying. I'm two weeks in. I take Tiara the Chihuahua. Who's mean as hell? Who's mean? Well, she bit you. Bit but me. Um, I owned four hundred dogs, and I've you never, bought the dog. You bought the dog for my the daughter. Dog she for bit daughter. you. That's the only time I've been oh. bitten. So. I take T.R., the Chihuahua, and here I am. He says, I meet him at the truck stop. He goes, follow me down this road in the swan or down about two miles at this guy's house. And I'm like, hey, okay. This wasn't in my paperwork. This isn't yeah, but you're not spending $500. I don't know for, what the hell do swans go for 15 uh, I promise you maybe five oh, no. grand. Yeah, five, probably five grand. A piece? No, but for a, but for for a, a pair, a it's very rare to get, you okay, know, it's... Well. I'm under swan So educated. I follow the guy down the road. We thinking, were too. I, so bad. I, we I, had no swan no, education. No, <laughs> I am destined. So I follow, and we pull into this residence and there's a, like a four horse covered trailer standing, sitting over by itself. And he goes, just back up to that trailer and we can put the swans in, in the crates. I'm like, okay. So I back up to the trailer and he says, Okay. I said, okay, what? He said, well, you can now load the swan. I'm like, I don't do birds. What are you talking about? He goes, I'm just the driver. He goes, I don't know anything about swans. So I'm like, okay, here we go. What has she gotten me into? So I have my ranch gloves are pink. And I put on my Versace safety glasses because I'm thinking I'm going in. Girlfriend's going in. Don't know what. And swans are like octopus. They look much more compact when they're. These are full grown swan. So they're probably 80 so I, pounds. I back up, open the back of the Hummer. Open she goes, the now crates. how big are these swans? I said, oh, I don't like border collie size. Yeah. You're fine. And I'm going in. You would have thought Armageddon. Those they have an swan, eight, foot wingspan. eight foot wingspan, they were knocking me everywhere across that trailer. I finally dove in and grabbed one of them and I wrapped my arms around its wings and I'm like, got it. I'm like, open the door. I'm coming <laughs> out neck. with it and its neck goes straight <gasps> up. It's like gristle. And so it's like is right, holding it's like, a vacuum I can't get it cleaner. out of the trailer because it's got a top on it. Right. So I'm like, OK, grab it, bring the neck down. You know, got the safety glasses on in case it comes at me. Throw it in the crate. I'm like, okay, well, I done got one down. What's another one? And I'm calling her. Are you going to be back soon? She's like, I'm going back in. Well, the chihuahuas didn't, I didn't think this through very well. The chihuahuas going crazy. The swans are in the crates going crazy. Crapping all over my car. There's feathers flying everywhere. I pick up the phone. I'm like, Really? Swans. Are you kidding me? This is where it gets better. She goes, okay, well, listen, we're on a little time crunch. <laughs> I said, what do you mean a little time crunch? She goes, well, it took you a little longer to get the swans than I expected because I need <laughs> you back at the ranch because there's a petting zoo showing up. <gasps> I bought a petting zoo. On the same day. I said, excuse me? <laughs> I said, they aged out. She said, well, they're fixing to show up at the ranch. I'm like, hmm. Okay. So I drive back and it's total chaos in my car. Total chaos the whole way. How far home. is your trip? Hour, hour and 15 hour and minutes? Half, yeah. Total chaos. So I get back to the ranch. Now I've already got a dog kennel set up out close to the lake for the swan because you have to contain them for a bit. Or they fly away or, or yeah. So you gotta kind of get them acclimated. The little bit of research that I have done, because again, we don't I don't do birds. <laughs> So two ladies show up literally 15 minutes after I get home. I get the swans unloaded by myself, put them in the kennel, in the big dog kennel. They back in. I've got this little special area that I'm going to keep, you know, whatever she gets. And they open the trailer. 
Well, it was like Noah's like Ark. Noah's Ark. <laughs> Literally. It came out in twos. And I'm like, and then they're sitting there and they have a tablet. And so first is all these ducks and they're just waddling out. And she goes, okay, well, that's Eric and that's Henry. Henry and that's, and he likes certain feet. I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm going to remember all of that. I'm there still, must have been 30 ducks. I'm still not over the oh, swan. Oh, you're supposed to remember their names? Oh mm-hmm. yes, very specific. So then this trader is partitioned. So then they open up the next door and of Noah's Ark. Yeah. And this little fat mini donkey comes walking out. Chewy. We still have Chewy. We still have Chewy. It's got to be about 30 by now. Yeah. He's old enough to buy beer for sure. (laughs) The only animal in there that was tame that was probably in the petting zoo. I'm not sure. Best $50 I ever spent. They threw threw him in. So then they open up another partition and there's all these peacocks. I don't know if you know anything about peacocks. I don't do birds either. Yeah. So uh, literally our peacocks are, llamas. So are spread across yeah. Brazos County by now. And then the last are two llamas, two boy llamas who like each other a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and who aren't broken. They've so, never been petted. And how it was how a petting did they get zoo. put in the senior citizen petting zoo? And they're mean and they hiss and they, they spit and they'll charge you. And Chichi Chong Chichi is what Chong. we named them. So were they young? Uh, we're not sure. Mm. Oh. We couldn't get close to them to touch them. Yes. So eventually Cheech and Chong learned how to get out of their pen and would go to the main house. And when we had guests, they would stalk the guest and, and charge chase their them. cars. And so literally I had to go down out one day and rope them <laughs> and pay someone to come take them away. Couldn't sell them. I had to pay somebody. Yes. I was not equipped for today. So it gets better. So the two swans, I don't know if you know anything about swans during mating season. Nope. Don't wear white is all I can say. Mm -hmm. Because it's not good. They go into like what we refer to as deer down here, rut. And they're very overprotective. And the female has the eggs, but the male sits on the eggs. They, they, they alternate. Alternate, but they're very aggressive. Extremely so you aggressive. You see these beautiful, fluid, elegant birds, and, you know, swans are always, I think of swans just like as the most peaceful. Uh, no, 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 no. Not true. So she calls One me. One attacked her. She calls me, and she's like, hey, can you come do something with this swan? So I go up there. I have on a, it's summertime, have on a white T-shirt. And literally have a swan on my back. I mean, just aggressive. So we have a video of Zoe on her, I think she's 12. She's on her little pink four-wheeler with a a big net. Net. And the swan starts chasing her on the four-wheeler. And then she nets him. That's the only way we could catch him. So the swan, she said, I never even heard it coming. I knew he'd gotten out, but they're very fast and they'll charge you. And she said, it jumped on my back and I made it as far as the Polaris or whatever. And you had a Navajo blanket. Mm -hmm. And you said, I threw that red and blue and green Navajo blanket around me and he just backed off. But saw all the white, I guess, is another threat. So I relocated him from their house, which is on a five acre lake, to the cabin that I lived in, which is on another five acre lake. And I used to sit on my front porch and get my entertainment by, I would tell Zoe, hey, she was little. She would do whatever I told her to do. I said, hey, (laughs) run out there and go grab that over there by the lake. And then I... She'd run out there and that swan would chase her back to the But they house. can move. They have so much power. They could make it across that five-acre lake in no time at all. And you just see the kind of power. I mean, it might as well have it an Evinrude hooked to the back of it. Because they really are forceful and they're fast. And what scared me the most, I mean, of course, I'm worried about my best friend. But so many people would come out with children that that swan was going to hurt somebody. So oh, but we it? had to get more, but yeah. As people started bringing them as gifts. So, so then we had, she got, she got another set of white swan. And then, uh, for a gift, she got a set of black swan. So, and they were younger. And so the black swans are, are not aggressive. are not as aggressive. Well, we don't know anything about birds. So we put the black swan with the white swan on the lake. 
That's like taking Jesse Jackson apparently to a KKK meeting. It's not good. <laughs> it is not good. I had to, to jump mix. in the lake and literally the white swan had that they drown them. So the white swan They're, had the, the white swan dominant. and was drowning. So I had to jump in the lake to rescue the black swan and move him out or her, um, he or she, out from the white swan. So he didn't get him? No, he did not get him. So we moved them to another lake. So we had the white swans on one lake, the black swans on another lake. So then one day, you know, I kind of loved my just quiet country life. I mean, I may not see in, in the summertime another individual, but my daughter and then we shared a guy, a helper guy between Houston and the ranch. The only guy we've ever fought That's over. The only, the only man we've ever fought over. So um, circling back to all the chaos that has it, it transpired across the ranch for the last 15 years, we just also were talking about what kind of an education Shanna's gained from having been the manager and, you know, the 911 contact for all of those things, which has evolved to quite an education. Yeah. Quite an KK education. KK Handler. Yeah. So, yeah, now, so... You got to realize when we moved to the ranch, it was basically raw land. And when you came in, it was just woods and thicket. It was one cabin and one house. And after I've moved there, I guess I've overseen the construction of eight additional houses, two large barns, three large, barns. three large barns, and covered arena. arena. Um, How many staff? Yes, I had up to 20, 23 staff. So, you know, I've learned a lot over the years. It's taught me a lot. Um, it seems like my role has shifted or expanded. I think you would say expanded. Expanded. At one time when I had 23 staff, most of, most of which were women, my office door was literally a revolving door of being a therapist. Of drama. Of drama. It, it, it was endless. And if you know me well, I am zero drama. And I'm not a, the most compassionate person in the world unless you're an animal. I'm kind of move on, get over it, put your big girl panties on. Let's she do this. She called me one day. She goes, I don't know how in the hell Miss Mona ever ran the chicken ranch with all those hookers. <laughs> this is because a it is so much drama and I hate drama. So much drama. Barn A was against Barn B. And it, it just, she didn't, Christy did not live there at the ranch. And so I would call and she's like, oh, you're just being, you now you're being dramatic. I'm like, bitch, you come over here and you, <laughs> you, you handle all these women. You handle all of this. You created this. Mm. Nothing worse than getting a phone call from her and say, my friend has a daughter that needs a job. There's nothing worse than that. Because then you're stuck in that situation Babysitting. Babysitting. And then, then when they don't become a good employee, you're the bad guy. So I've always been the bad guy. I mean, everyone, it, you know, it's just, it's just is what it is. So I, I've learned a lot. Um, and then that led me into my next career, which is real estate. 